This is the latest low-cost printer from Creality. It's the Ender 3 V3 SE. You can get this for under $200. Runs Marlin, the same old type of Ender 3. It's decent. But this is the absolute latest Ender 3, the Ender 3 V3. But rather than look like this and act like this, it's really more like this, the Creality K1C. I'll explain it all on today's Film at Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. This video is also brought to you by the generous donations of my Patreon supporters. Many of the components that are on the K1C are on this guy. It's basically the same hot end, the same extruder, and even the mechanism at the back. It's got two stepper motors and belts that control the Z and also the X, but it's all the same belt system. The same thing that's like on the top of this. So if you took this, put it on its side, put it on top of this, it's basically the same movement, except instead of the nozzle going this way, like this would to go down in the bed, this one's coming out the side, essentially, on this, or straight down. And then you have a normal back and forth bed, bed slinger, versus a bed that's stationary but goes up and down. But mechanism-wise and movement, it's very similar to the K1C. The Creality K1C sells for $559, where the Ender 3 V3 is $389. The Ender 3 V3 comes as a kit, and you also have to set the proper voltage. Do this first. They give you a warning because once it's assembled, you've essentially covered that up. The gantry slides into place, and there's two screws on each side to hold it. There's also two screws on each side that you put in from the bottom. After that, you slide on the side spool holder to the two pegs that are already there. The display has a ribbon cable that you have to snap in place and then slide it onto the slots in front and snap it to the frame. There's multiple connectors that need to be plugged in for stepper motors or other accessories. Make all those connections. The manual gives you all the details of how to do this. It's pretty simple. And then there's one that goes right into the top of the hot end. And this thing has to be clamped down with a tie strap and then a cover put over the top of that. There's a PTFE tubing that slides into the hot end, and then you have to put these clips on before you put the other end into the filament runout sensor. The cable that controls the hot end snaps into a clip on the filament runout sensor, and then those clips that you slid over the PTFE tubing clip into the wire. Load a spool of filament onto the spool holder, and then there's a bracket that you have to snap in place, which pushes against the filament to stop it from unwinding. There's a lever to unlock the gears that pulls the filament in, so you push the filament into the filament runout sensor all the way through the PTFE tubing into the extruder and then lock it back in place so the gears can grab it. The printer is now assembled and we need to start it up and run calibration. Select the language you want to use and then read their privacy policy and accept that. It's then going to search for a network to connect to, you can skip that, and also the time zone you want to be in. And then it'll run a self-check, and it'll go through a whole bunch of steps on its own. It takes about 20 minutes until it's completed. I printed the typical Benchy that they already had on the machine, and it printed really fast. This thing flies around really, really quick, and the quality was really good. This is a very good Benchy. Even the hull is smooth. Now, they claimed it only took 13 minutes, but I timed it from the beginning with its setup. It's actually 17 minutes and 16 seconds. But that makes this absolutely the fastest Ender 3. So after the Benchy, I did a bunch of test prints because there was a bunch of test prints that came with this machine. One of them is this uh, torture test. So these pins printed really well. They broke off here because I broke them off. They actually printed. They're very fuzzy, so the stringing was bad. But it printed some really fine detail, which looked good. The uh, There's gaps in here for these pins to see how tight they fit. They all fell out, so the gap are good, the, the clearance is good. Uh, the cooling could have been a little better. This sag here at 15 degrees and even under here where it's bridging could have been a little better, but bridging on the side is good. So I'd say overall it's a decent test print. Not perfect, but good. And then there was a print in place, which is this thing, and you pop it up and it mounts your phone. This printed popped off the bed, no problem, worked great. Then I printed this. This was supposed to be, or it is supposed to be, a camera mount. I just can't figure out where it goes yet. <laughs> but this printed fast. The walls look pretty good. It's pretty smooth. I wouldn't say it's a perfect print, but it's really good. But again, printing as fast as this thing right here, or even 
the P1S I have back here. Very similar speed on a bed slugger. What I don't like about this machine is the side spool holder. Now this thing homes up here and then starts printing down here. So it ends up with all this extra filament that could potentially get uh, tangled. So they include this thing you can snap on with a little bit of pressure to hold tension against the spool, but it only goes so far. As the spool goes down, this isn't doing anything. And it also rubs on the side of the spool, so it causes resistance, so I hate it. And the wiring is over here, the bed wiring, the gantry wiring, it all interferes. And this is direct drive. Now, even on this low-cost Ender 3 SE, they put the spool holder up here so it can come out come down to the extruder straight on. Why they didn't do that here? I don't know. They've even got two mounting screws in the back here or, or slots where screws could go and there's a lip under here to support it not over here. Well then I found this print on their sample prints and it looks like a top spool holder. So because there's a lip here but nothing here I think I could slide this in go around the belts get around the belt yeah and then get it down it slides over to where there's a lip and now it's mostly supported um, there's screw holes back here if I could drill a hole into this thing I could mount it stronger but now you can put the spool holder here and the the little thing twists off and goes into here and then feed this uh, filament direct drive this makes more sense I think I'll switch to this and try it out but why they went to a side spool holder on this after almost all the under threes had it up here and they would make the film go all the way around on those Bowden tube early under threes. Why it did this, I really don't get it, but I don't like it. Now this is a print that I call a torture test. It's not really a torture test, but it's a great test to your printer. It's a scissor jack that goes up and down when you turn the knob, but it prints in place like this on your bed. And a lot of printers fail the first time you print it. You might have to adjust some settings, but most printers will fail first time. The K1C printed it, first time, no problem. The P1S, first time, no problem. My K1 Max, first time, no problem. All enclosed printers. This is an open printer, bed slinger, so I wanted to try it on there. This was the result. It printed good up to this point, and then it started getting some lifting here in the middle, and I think the nozzle hit it because I came back, it was knocked off the bed, and I had a big pile of string. And then somehow, after all that, the nozzle got clogged. So I had to take this apart and unclog the nozzle. Now, it's supposed to have this easy remove single nozzle. That's what they advertise. Well, it didn't work out that way. The nozzle, which is this assembly, actually came apart. The nozzle part came off this titanium insert with the heat brake. And it's supposed to come out as one piece, but mine broke apart. Then I tried to put this back together, put it in, and it wouldn't fit. I found out this was too long. It was like 68 millimeters. It should have been 65. So I ended up stealing the nozzle from a K1C unit that I had, an extra unit, because I had one that got a whole blob. I did a video on this. So I have an extra unit, but I stole the nozzle, which is the same size as what's on here put it in there and then I could print but what a nightmare and it's because the gap here is just too big and I thought maybe I did something and pulled it apart but I don't know how this thing worked at all because I tried pressing this tighter it won't go tighter this thing was off from the start after I got that fixed I printed a few more PLA prints and they printed fine so then I said let's try PTG and I got this green gate PTG and I printed the phone stand. It's a little bit tighter But it printed really good and then I tried printing the scissor jack and it failed and it looked like the PTG just wasn't bonding as well, so I can't totally blame the printer at this point, but It still doesn't look as good the sides don't look as good even this is not as clean But that could be my filament, but then I said let's try ABS so I tried printing the stand and ABS I cranked up the temperature, but the sides curled. Um, it just wasn't sticking to this bed, and it peeled off. I tried it again, same story. So I kind of gave up with ABS. Besides, if I'm printing ABS, I want an enclosed chamber. K1C, P1S, K1 Max, they all print ABS for me, and they're enclosed. It keeps the heat inside. I don't recommend an open bed like this for ABS. But it's direct drive, so it should be able to print TPU. So I tried to print a phone case. The first layer went down, it didn't bond that well. Uh, maybe I didn't have the temperature perfect. Um, I've pulled on this, that's why it's stringy, but it got clogged right away. 
So this nozzle didn't seem to like TPU either. And it was a like a 95A TPU I've printed on many machines without issue. So I'm not really sold on this doing multi-material. It prints PLA fast. It can do PETG. For other materials, I'd rather have an enclosed machine like the K1C, P1S, or K1 Max. But what I can completely recommend is PCBWay.com. I use PCBWay for all my circuit boards, but they also do 3D printing. Now you may say, why go here for 3D printing? Because they can print all kinds of materials, stuff you can't even print on your 3D printer. So you upload your STL file and give them all the information for what you want to print. And they'll come back with a quote and give you a price. Have them print it and they'll ship it right to you. So check out PCBWay.com. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the other videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way, or get a membership at Thangs.com. That way you get access to all my profiles and also my electronics books. And if nothing else, click on that Filament Friday logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Filament Friday.